So um, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 5.30, 5.30 on the dot. Um, it's our annual reorganization meeting, so I'll call the meeting to order. And any adjustments to the agenda? Nope. Yep. Okay. First order of business before I hand it off is to elect a chair person. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Amy. A nope. second. Any other nominations? Hearing none. Any discussion? <laughs> Amy, you're good? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm good. That's good. All the best. There, thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Patrick? Aye. Thank you. Amy, it's all yours. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I look forward to um, being chair again along with my valued team. So. We are a team. Yes, valued team. Um, excellent. So we will move right along to the rest of these um, this board organization. So I've looked for nominations to elect a vice chair. I nominate uh, Bill Edgerton. A second. Um, is there any further uh, nominations? Call the question. All right. All of those in favor of um, Bill for vice chair? Saying if I was saying aye. 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 Excellent. Um, all right, clerk. Um, I nominate Patrick. Second. I second. Okay, a third. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. Um, any other nominations? Great. Um, all oh. those. Uh, what do I do? Any call the question. question? Any, any discussion? Is that what you have to do? Call the question. Call the question. Call okay. The all those in favor? Uh, Pat for clerk. Sigma five by saying aye. 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 Okay. Great. So now we go to appointments, um, which uh, does not mean we need to vote on each. Consensus. Each one of these, so Unless we can't reach it, but. right. Okay, so we do need to appoint um, three members to the um, the full SU board, the White River Valley SU board. Um, I will volunteer for one. I appoint Bill for two. I'll continue to do it. And Patrick for three. Yeah. As, uh, is everybody happy with those appointments? Yes. Okay. I move that we the uh, that we appoint the aforementioned slate for the uh, WR VSU full board. Second. Yeah, we don't. We're, yeah, if you have consensus on appointments, you don't actually have to even okay. make any nominations yeah. or anything. Yep. Okay. okay. Great. Um, so uh, one member for the executive board, is is that usually the chair or can oh, we that... have an alternate still? Sorry. Oh, I that it was new this which year, Which would actually. be important, I think. Yes, to okay. Try to get that. Great. Who wants to volunteer to be the alternate? Um, so barring one of us cannot go, this would be a voting position if one of the three... And if you want to, some boards will actually appoint more than one, which you're allowed to within our bylaws. So essentially, if um, the three, um, any of the three members were not able to, anybody who was in this alternate slot would be able to take a voting position. Correct. Uh, I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Robert, you would volunteer as an alter alternate? Well, I could. Okay. We want to do. You got do, both. Why don't we do Either. both? Whatever you want. <laughs> sure. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. We'll put Robert and Cynthia. Okay. Uh, okay, so member of the SU Executive Board. Um, now, does this have to be the chair or? It doesn't have to be. It, but it has been traditionally. Okay. And, um, you know, frankly, we haven't used, I mean, with the, with the ability to have hybrid meetings now, right. um, our ability to get quorums has been strong. And so this board, this was originally created because we were struggling with quorums for the full board meetings. Right. And so it's to allow business to continue. So 
Um, we haven't discussed doing away with the executive board, so you know we continue to appoint, but we haven't called an executive board meeting in over a year. Okay. What was the usual reason for having an executive board versus? It was what I just said. It was we weren't leveraging hybrid, and they were struggling to get full okay. board attendance to have a quorum of nine. So they created the executive board that they could then, if if the executive board showed up, they could still call the meeting to order and do business. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really, we haven't had to leverage that. Okay. I suggest we do as we did last, last year of having the, um, um, the member and the alternate be the, the chair and the vice chair. Okay, we go with that. All right. So that would be uh, myself as the member and Bill as the alternate. Anybody yeah. disagrees, please speak. Um, all right, record uh, a recording secretary. Um, we had Parker as our recording secretary. He's done a great job. Um, is he still available and willing? I think so. Okay. So we Parker Oddsley. Parker Odd Oddsley. Oddsley. Okay. A-U. Well, he'll know how to spell his name. Okay. <laughs> As he's doing the minutes, he'll know. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, okay, point one member for signing AP and payroll. Um, I have been doing it for a number of years. I do enjoy doing it, and it is convenient um, now that I'm working more in Bethel, I'm close to the office. And, and again, I actually really enjoy doing it. So um, You're it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, um, and we assign an alternate. Um, Justine had done it in the past. Uh, I don't know if somebody else wants to jump up to volunteer, or we we can volunteer her, can't we? Yep. <laughs> don't come to a meeting. You get appointed to all kinds of positions, I'll right? <laughs> okay. Well, then I suggest we put Justine in, um, unless anybody else. Um, has, would prefer to or has a... I always detested it, so I won't volunteer. You what? I detested Just, it. You detested it. I, I really enjoy it. I, I, I do. It um, keeps me a little bit more on the beat of what's happening. Um, okay, appoint a member uh, to the negotiation council. Um, Bill, are you willing to do negotiation council again? We would really appreciated you. Um, well, uh, what I do, but... Uh, I think you do a lot. <laughs> uh, great. Um, Will we have any negotiations in this community? No, we don't have any other than possibly we've talked about pulling the council together for planning purposes okay. to okay. get ahead of the game. So I think that it will start to meet, but it'll be for planning. But we don't have any negotiations sitting down, negotiations coming up, which is nice. Nice. Great, that, that's encouraging. Yeah, so the nice thing about our superintendent, he's always thinking ahead. <laughs> and in this game, you got to do it. You know, to, to be, oh, oops, and then uh, whatever the case is. So thank you for doing that. Excellent. Um, one member to the policy committee. Uh, Patrick did was a, a member of the policy committee last year. Or is, are you still willing to um, take that position? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Great. <clears throat> All right. Point a truant officer. Um, Lindy was last year. That kind of makes the most sense to me. Okay. She's never showed me her badge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, designate a uh, newspaper and radio station for official notices. This is when we need to do, like, warnings and stuff. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm trying to think here. This it, district. It was uh, the Herald and the Great Eastern Radio was yeah, what we did. And I'm not yeah. sure which. One time we did the Mountain Times as well, I think, but not la last year. The yeah, Herald, the so. Randolph Herald. I'd suggest we do the Randolph Herald again. And I'm sorry, I'm not really sure what the call numbers of the Great Eastern Radio is. Is that WDEV? It hits all the radio stations. Oh, it is a okay. Okay. That, I didn't know what it was. It'll hit WDEV, Froggy, it, like. Really? Okay. Yeah. So oh. it's a. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would recommend that we go ahead with those same um, outlets again. 
Okay. Okay, so uh, set time, date, location of our regular board meetings. Uh, we currently are doing meetings in conjunction with um, uh, Granville and Hancock um, on the same night to help alleviate uh, extra meetings for our superintendent and um, staff. I think they've been working out quite well, um, having them on at 530. I, I, I would like to, I think we should continue to do the first Monday of the month at 5.30 at alternating campuses. Is there any reason to switch it to Tuesday? I mean, we did it because, because Hancock or Granville had issues with their, I think, select board meetings. I think they'll continue to have those issues. So, okay. Yeah. So, that, that sounds, makes sense. Okay. Um, great. So, we'll uh, continue uh, that regular course. And so designated posting places, so this is where our uh, warnings are posted for our meetings. Uh, so currently we have the Rochester Post Office and the Rochester Town Office and the Stockbridge Post Office and the Stockbridge Town Office, I believe. Is there, and, is there and additional the and, and the schools? And the schools. Yeah. And the yeah. both schools. And that satisfies our posting requirements, right, yep. for locations? And Stockbridge has two post offices, so right. it's both, it's both Stockbridge and Gaysville. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that, that uh, uh, gets, uh, yeah, gets, it, gets it across there, so I mm -hmm. think that we should continue with those. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. We shall move on to the consent agenda. Um, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from the Monday, May 1st regular meeting. Okay. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 <laughs> Great. And a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, May 2nd, which is was our annual meeting. So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Great. Um, approved by a student five by saying aye. 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 Great. Okay, so now I move on to public comment. Do you have any public? No. Okay. Uh, board comment then. I just um, oh. want to take this opportunity to welcome our newest member of <laughs> the gang. Excellent. My wife says, don't use that word, but I can't. <laughs> I'm kind of fond of going way back. At you. It was before your time you were born, but Spark and his gang and all this. Sort of but anyway, Cynthia is um, welcome, and I, we Thank look you. forward to uh, working with you. And we've really got a, a sterling team and leadership and skill sets <coughs> that mm -hmm. I think complement each other. Yeah. And um, so I thank you for... Um, your interest in, in being with us. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, you can't leave now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're stuck. <laughs> Do you need in, any introductions to anyone? Pardon? Do you need introductions to anyone? No. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Great. Um, and I just want to uh, thank everybody and Bill for uh, taking over last month when I was dealing I with a family and emergency and, pretty... and just the entire administrative team and Everybody, um, I heard great things about the annual meeting. It went very smoothly and was, um, everybody felt well educated um, mm -hmm. about the decision that they were making. And I just wanted to say thank you. I really appreciate you guys stepping up. Excellent. Uh, I just had a question in the minutes, everything we recognize those people that spoke up in the minutes, but did anybody have a head count what we had at the, at yeah. the annual town meeting, it'd be kind of because people say they're. I thought it was a good turnout, and I don't know how to define. So I, to me, it was you know, 35, 45 people, um, and that speaks well of their interest in their schools, yeah, and mm -hmm. their children, yeah, that's in, great, and our town. So I think it was pretty good. Uh, um, anyway, excellent, Patrick. Yeah, no, <clears throat> I just wanted to um say how awesome it was to attend the uh performance last week oh yeah in rochester this farm's got talent it was 
really well done. It was great to see it in the auditorium. I heard so many people um, comment on the fact that it was at the auditorium, how, uh, how nice the auditorium looked and they were surprised that it was in such good shape. And, you know, there were other people that thought we should do more of that. Um, myself included, Justine and I actually were just like so happy to see that. And I hope we get to see more. I think it was it's such a great way to introduce so many parts of, of the arts as far as theater and music and, uh, you know, painting, whatever, you know, making all the, the props and whatnot. But I just thought it was really great. And <clears throat> I think there were multiple people as well as I that thought like it didn't it seemed like like it was don't know Pat you're from now all the students were really interested in and it didn't seem like they were forced to do it it just felt <laughs> It was so natural. Excellent. Well, thank you, you know, Pat. You're really you're kind cool. of breaking up. Great. So, but I think we understand your sentiment and totally agree with it. That is wonderful. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, is there any other comment? Yes. Yeah, I, I hope that we can perhaps do more. Given Lyle's comment that he's going to find some circ circulators for us mm -hmm. um, from the the from the high school in, in Burlington that they're demolishing. He's gonna find some circulators for us so we can replace our alternate circulators. Really? Uh, wow. in, the, um, uh, in the high school. So yeah. okay. that would make our, I mean, right now we have a problem in, you know, it's, it's a little iffy on, on planning because if one of our circulators goes down, mm -hmm. we have no backup. But if he gets these circulators for us, then Huh. The system will have backup again. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But I think we're we still have issues to go through on uh, the uh, replacement tank. We're working on getting that. Yeah, right. I felt pretty optimistic that. Yeah, and I think think there there two rivers is looking to fund that. Fund the digging up of the underground tank. Oh. Okay. And the the dealing with that the replacement tank we'll have to take care of. But okay. we had known that now for a few months. Okay. Great. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, if there's no further board comment, we'll move on to the uh, reports from the board, superintendent's report to the board. So, yeah, my reporting hand, one thing I wanted to highlight is um, business manager Weatherall and I are going to be going out um, in the field with Green Mountain Power tomorrow to um, take a look at where it makes the most sense for us to possibly install level two uh, charging stations to support the, if you remember, way back in the fall, we received uh, a grant to purchase three electric buses for the supervisory union to replace older uh, buses. We asked for an extension on executing that because since then, We've executed a contract with a new transportation provider. Um, the infrastructure, we needed some additional support on making certain like what made the most sense. At one point, we were talking about having a more centralized charging system. Mm -hmm. The more that we've done research, it makes the most sense, I think, to have um, charging systems that are installed right on the building to support the infrastructure um, money that we were awarded. So we got $60,000 to support the infrastructure charging stations. And so one of the buildings that we're looking into and based on the root size, it seems like Stockbridge could actually be one of the places where it made a lot of sense to leverage an electric bus. They already park in front of the school. Wendy knows I love that blocks our school, but that's where they park here right now. And it, it, the proximity would make sense possibly for the charging station. So I just wanted to highlight that we will be vi visiting out here tomorrow with Green Mountain Power to get a sense of whether or not there's capacity within our, our electrical system that we have the infrastructure to possibly do so. And then the full board will receive uh, further updates and communication on this topic at the June meeting as well. So I just wanted to highlight that. 
Otherwise, um, you know, the just real quick legislative update, a lot didn't happen um, that we had been discussing. The House and Senate really didn't get an alignment this year around house uh, around bills, education bills. Um, and so, you know, the one that PCB, te PCB testing did get, um, and that is not signed yet, so this could be one that still could await a veto possibly. Um, but PCB testing was, there was two years added to complete all the testing requirements, um, with the idea being that they would work to get up to 100% funding to deal with the, um, any type of abatement that needed to happen around PCBs. Um, and that one I have not seen that is actually have been executed yet into law. So we'll wait and see there. Um, and then the pre-K part, there's a study committee on, on pre-K in general. One of the things that it looks like and that we're still hopeful is that um, come 2026 that a pre-K student will actually count for a 1.0 um, FTE um, if they attend five day a week full day pre-k. Um, we were hoping to get that starting next year. Um, it looks like it'll phase in by 2026. But that is something that we know is coming down the pike. It's not still that questionable. Is in that bill. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and I'll take any questions folks may have. Is PFAS on the horizon? Is PFAS it's not beyond PCBs? Uh, not that I've heard. Or water no. testing or whatever. Okay. No, radon is a testing requirement for us to complete by 2025. Okay. We're still waiting for the rollout of what that okay. all means and, and around the agency. But. Yeah, PFAS is the forever chemicals. Got it. All right. Any update on uh, Agency of Education's uh, search for a new, is it director or? Secretary. Secretary. Um, I heard from some of those in the field that they are actually going to complete a search. And so there was some talk about leaving um, the interim secretary in place um, and not going through a complete search because the governor, it's an, a governor appointed position. And there's a, there was a, some discussion about whether or not Governor Scott planned to run. Um, and so did it make sense through going through a search when his term would be up and essentially a year after the appointment? Um, and so it does sound like though that they're going to complete a search process. So the way that works is the state board actually starts the search process and that they nominate um, candidates, I believe up to three, to the governor to interview and then the governor makes the appointment. And is there a, a role um, for the um, Vermont School Board Association and the Vermont Superintendents Association, the Vermont Principal Association, to to be part of that process, or is it exclusive to the AOE board? Well, it's the State Board of Education, yeah. and so certainly we could give comment, yeah. um, but no, we, we don't have any way to weigh in past that. Okay. It's just we need a good secretary. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it helps us. Thank you. All right, is there any other questions for our superintendent regarding his report? All right, if there's none, we'll move on to the principal's report. So I have two reports for you tonight. The first one's my normal, my, um, my actual principal's report. I think the only thing I would add and highlight is this weekend, this past weekend, we had 10 girls from between both campuses in grades three through six participating girls on the run. Oh, okay. Um, and they actually, you might have seen the end of their celebration as you pulled up. Yeah. Um, so they had a great time with that. It seems like we've done a lot more than what's in here, but most of it's been around testing and finishing the seat testing, as well as um, Pat mentioned our, this farm's got talent. Um, you'll see kind of a highlight from that in a couple minutes but um that was a majority of the month of may it felt like 
and it just goes so fast <laughs> uh, this time of year. Yeah. Um, other things that I'll add to this is on June 16th at 530 is the sixth grade graduation for Stockbridge and June 19th. At 5.30 is the 6th grade graduation for Rochester, and we'd love to have anybody. 16th at 5? What time? 5.30. Are we invited? Of course. We'd love to have you attend. I think it's great because the kids do little speeches and, and, and gratitude. how many kids are going to be up there? Uh, there's six from Stockbridge, and then in Rochester on the 19th at 5.30, uh, there'll be seven. Um, so those are kind of upcoming things. And then um, in building highlights, I would say that the trust that was in the back of the school at Rochester has already been moved into the preschool area. So that space is ready to be prepped for the, the cement for the wood pellet pallet um, that'll go in in the summer's work or silo. Um, and then the... Um, the old, the, boil, the old boiler in the elementary school has already started being taken apart. They started that work this weekend. Right. So, yeah. Ooh, that's great. That's exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> very yeah. exciting. Yeah, so is. those are kind of the highlights of just the report itself. Excellent. Um, I was wondering, uh, you said on the 24th, two representatives from the Agency of Education. Mm -hmm. So what, um, they did some observations. What what was the feedback or what was the purpose of, of it? I just... Yeah, um, so like the feedback slash purpose. I would say that the purpose is they were really just looking at schools who have made systemic change around just like literacy instruction, but just as a whole to social emotional changes um, and how that kind of pointed us in the direction of making this, which we did to direct instruction okay. for literacy, for um, phonics and decoding instruction and why mid-year. Yeah. Um, okay. And then they actually wanted to see it. So they came here and they saw um, our second and third graders and then some fifth and sixth graders and they were able to talk to teachers as well. Um, and then we went to Rochester and they saw first and second grade and then they saw um, fifth and sixth grade spelling. So they were, I think, fascinated with the approach in general because it's a big switch from um, Fontes and Pinnell and mm -hmm. whole language. So really asking a lot of questions around that and just wanting to know the why and um, really understanding like how much time does it take how do you determine which kids are in which groups um, mm -hmm. things of that nature that's great that's, it was cool yeah that is pretty cool that they they kind of narrowed right down on us and like yeah. you guys have got something good going on there mm -hmm. show us it absolutely so that's awesome that's exciting it was great well, uh, congratulations to you and your team Thank you. for, for doing this um, this takes leadership and I don't know if anybody's more important than our principals and our principal here. So, um, Thank you. it takes buy-in, it takes, you know, confidence and trust, and then taking the hard work and then taking it seriously, all those things. And it's new. It isn't like you're following. Right. You're, in some ways, you're creating a new yeah. um, mm -hmm. emphasis going forward. So I, um, we're, we're very, I'm very pleased. Thank you. But it's the teachers, because they definitely <laughs> have to put it in play. So they've done that. Excellent. That's been great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is there any other questions uh, or comments on Lindy's principal report? Okay. Well, then we will move on to the social, emotional, and data report. Yeah. So um, to kind of walk you through this, so these are office discipline referrals kind of broken into some different categories. And what that really means is things that make their way to me behavior-wise. Okay. Um, and so you'll see um, kind of some specifics. Uh, these are the same data points that we look at at our universal team, so everybody all together. And then our targeted team, which is a small group of myself, school counselor, a specialist teacher, um, and two classroom teachers, one from each campus. 
and then our intensive team, which includes the special educator, uh, Annette Rhodes joins us. So this is these are data points that we use um, to really kind of make some decisions. A couple years ago, it would have been around making sure we're all using the same language around teaching expectations mm -hmm. and what that means. And now we've really evolved into honing into who's in this group of kiddos. Um, are they someone who, or is it a kiddo that we see frequently with the same types of behavior? What time of day do we see mm -hmm. those things? Why, what might happen, and how do we go forward with there? And that's where our targeted team really steps in, which is something that was new to us this year that we worked last summer at Best Institute, which is coming up here at the end of June to really de develop the outline and what that looks like and how to put support plans or behavior plans or check-in, check-out plans into place for students who struggle to meet learning expectations or safety expectations. It could be a wide variety of things. And this uh, is um, year to date, shall we say? Yes, okay. this is as fresh as Last, this is all the way through June 1st. Okay. Or, sorry, uh, May 31st, probably. Better answer. Um, so, we're seeing some increases. Obviously, 2021 and 20, 2020 to 2021 is extremely lower uh, in most areas than previous. Uh, than last year and this school year. There was a lot less days though, wasn't there? <laughs> well, that was all, you know, we were in person, but I, what I would say oh, we is were. we're all in, um, that was when everybody was their own little unit. So there wasn't a lot of cr interaction mm -hmm. across grade levels or classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people were- a lot of transition periods for right. students well, to go through. Right. Students didn't transition, adults transitioned to students as part of those um, return to school guidelines from mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, now we're really looking at, I would say, a couple of things. One would be there's a couple of cohorts of kids who definitely need some strengthening of social skills and how to interact and impulse control is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a focal point that we're gonna work on that when we go to Best Institute at the end of the month, how to implement that so everybody's teaching that to students at all times. Yep. Um, and also a little more understanding and some of our professional development will be on the difference between uh, what kind of triggers a lot of things is the difference between compliance and like disrespect and what becomes mm. an argument frequently mm -hmm. and then can result in more. Um, so those are two focal points that we're really honing in on the next year. But questions? It's a lot of data in one. I was fascinated by this. The uh, I'm looking at this office discipline referrals by grade. Yes. The last one. Because at first I was, my hair was on fire, but I look at this and I'm going preschool, mm -hmm. look at kindergarten. First is off the charts, but after that, second, third, fourth, we've upped a little bit, but fifth is pretty close and sixth we're down. So it's all over the place. I, it's hard to kind of look at this. And then I was trying to figure out, because I think there's a direct relationship between this and the educational outcomes. Mm -hmm. And this is the same kids that 75% of them scored proficient or above proficiency in math. Right. And we made major gains in uh, English language arts. We're not there yet, but we math had we've had two years, and this is going to be the end of our kind of full-time first year for right. English language arts. So, am I overemphasizing that that? The academic success has helped us in some of these grades, because um, I like to think that um, that kids act out because they feel either picked on or ignored or all that sort, um, and um, so they kind of lash out or, or or act irresponsibly. And um, I remember being kicked out of kindergarten, and uh, I remember Robert Rossi, and Robert was really close with the teacher, so Robert got in the cloak room. Mm -hmm. And Billy Edgerton got out in the, the hall, and all the teachers walked by and said, Billy, how, did, well, how come you're kicked out of the classroom? So times have changed, and luckily that didn't influence me too much. But I, 
Um, is there some connection you think, Lindy, on how we're doing academically in this? Um, I as think, well as your I target think what teams? this data helps inform us of is more around areas that kids might be struggling academically that we don't pick up. So the behavior comes to avoid yeah. whatever academic piece mm. may be happening is a typical trend that I would say I've seen. I think some of it um, can be that, that we're making more progress academically yeah. so they feel comfortable. Like if we compared um, what happens certain times of day, like uh, at one point it was like, what happens at 10, 15 on a Tuesday? Like that's how pinpointed we can get because most of it, well, it's a transition time. It's a transition from snack and morning movement break back into learning. Well, would you really want to go from playing Foursquare back into right academics, not always, and those transition times we found were harder. So talking about what those look like. Uh, another common time is like one o'clock. It's like, and that's after lunch and recess, mm -hmm. and we come back, and um, I would say that's probably popular time for that, if I look at that fourth grade group, it's hard to transition back into academics. So mm -hmm. some of it is academics though, but I would say transitions are still our big mm -hmm. focal point. One of the data points that we didn't put on here that will make certainly put on before is the percentage of your population that have less than mm -hmm. three office referrals. Mm -hmm. um, because our goal would be that that's 85%. Right. That would be our goal. The 85% of our kids have less than three office referrals. Yep. Um, we're not asking students to be perfect, but if you start to get over three, then you might be saying, What's going on? what extra support might we need? Mm -hmm. And so my sense is is that you're probably right around that number mm -hmm. and what we will do is we'll follow back up with you and let you guys know what percentage you're at in regards to that because i think that will give you a better yeah. sense of like how are we meeting the the universal right. needs and yes we may have a subset of students that need more intensive supports but are in general are we meeting most of our kids right. needs universally and then we need to work on those plans like lindy's talking about for the other 15 percent so I'll have Lindy look that up and we'll send yeah. that out to folks. Mm -hmm. Sorry that, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even I think didn't. of that oh, until you said it out loud. And they have a report in Swiss. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. This is a hard one. Uh, this one well, this is looking forward to uh, fiscal year 2024 20, and all. Uh, on this issue, is this something that um, still keeps you up at night or is this something that you feel uh, you've got a handle on and over time it's going to just there's some um, uncertainties and right. things you can't control but uh, is this something that you think is going to move in the right direction? I think we're uh, I mentioned it before our targeted team has really headed a lot of this off I wouldn't say it keeps me up and up at night are there um, there are times when it's the why stumps you a little bit and that just takes some more time to get to the bottom of because not every when I say we put together a behavior plan or a targeted support plan for a student not everything works for every kiddo so it's really mm -hmm. about pulling it back to figure it out to make sure each, each individual kiddo is getting exactly what they yeah, need. Identifying that why. And yeah exactly and sometimes that takes time. I think that's just um, remarkable that we you, we have the, the tools and the team right. and the, the way to do that and I think we can really address Absolutely. our kids very well in that aspect. Absolutely. That's great. Um, okay, is there any further questions or comments about the social emotional data report? And I'll just add to the board because I don't know if we emphasize this enough. We've really been trying to strengthen our partnership with Claire Martin Center. Right. And okay. so we do have a school based clinician that supports kids across both your right. buildings. We have a BCBA that board certified behavioral analyst that can push in to help observe kids to write behavioral plans. One of the things we're constantly monitoring is, are those supports helping? Mm -hmm. And so uh, Annette Rhodes, our special services director, and Michaela Martin, our intensive program coordinator, meets with Claire Martin with our, B our BCBA every Monday morning to progress monitor kids' plans across the SU, but then also is meeting with their school-based leader uh, on a bi-weekly basis. Mm -hmm. So I just want the board to know we're partnering with Claire Martin and we're looking at how do we continue to strengthen it and make certain that, that our investment with them is returning the results we would want, meaning Excellent. that folks right. are feeling better supported in our schools. 
in the metrics about how do you how do you evaluate your successes or failures? I think it's it's these data reports, right? Yeah. So okay. uh, you know, I think it's are we seeing decreases in discipline referrals? Are we seeing increases in student achievement? And are we seeing increases in attendance? That's another data point that I'm really interested in continuing to monitor across the SU. Because uh, I think when kids feel good about school, then they're more apt to come to school, right? Mm -hmm. And then when kids are not feeling good about school, they're much more apt to avoid school. And so that, that's, those to me are really the measures we're using to try to see is this working. Right. Great. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, we'll move on to the business manager's report. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Joe. So you have my report. It provides the updates of what's happening in the business office through the month of June. Uh, fiscal audit for 23. We had our pre-audit meeting on Thursday with our auditors. That went really well. Um, we're looking forward to working with our team and are ready to go. And they've already selected uh, the pre-audit samples that they're going to go through for payroll and it will let us know accounts payable audit samples um, early next week most likely is the current plan and then uh, what's going on in school food authority world is doing our monthly submissions we've submitted our application for the summer food service program uh, Misha Johnson our child nutrition program coordinator for the supervisory union worked with Haley and the one planet site leaders to get through that and determine our needs for that program. So that's been submitted. And then lastly, um, as a discussion item, which is one of your action items later on in your meeting, is the tax anticipation note for fiscal year 24. Great. And there any questions? Is there any questions for Tara on her business manager's report? You make it sound so simple, Tara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we know it is not. We know you're hard at work up there. <laughs> okay, well, if there's no questions for Tara, thank you. We'll move on to the Policy Committee and the Board's Civility Code of Ethics reading. Well, if Patrick wants... Patrick, were you at the last Policy Committee meeting? I can't remember. I, I was not... We okay. just we just had our baby. Yeah. No excuse. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Like the the are the are the blur. Okay. <laughs> I understood. So the the board uh, member civilities and code of ethics policy um, was revised um, by the policy committee um, two months ago, and then. Uh, they voted it back out of committee this past month. And so really what changed um, since the last time you saw this was, one, the code of ethics that we typically adopt as board um, hasn't been embedded in this policy. Okay. So you'll see that it's at, it says, <clears throat> WF, uh, WRVSU board members' primary concerns must be the educational welfare of the students in the district and excellent return on the investment for taxpayers. Board members shall, and then it's essentially the code of ethics, act within the scope of their official role. And go through each thing. The other piece that happened within this presented policy is under complaints. Within the VSBA um, essential man, Bill, what's it called, or Amy or Robert? The the essential guide to. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. The, like. The book the everyone gets that you yeah. should be yeah. getting, Cynthia, from the VSBA. Yeah. Okay. Um, it provides an outline around how a board could address concerns around a violation of the board um, code of ethics. And so the White River Unified District Board really wanted to emphasize that language under the complaint section. And so you'll find that language there as well. And so those were the changes to this. Um, you know, we're going to do readings this month. We recess in July. My goal would be to try to get this in front of the full board in August uh, for possible approval. And then local district boards would take this up throughout September. Okay. Great. 
Great. Does anybody have any discussion or um, comments or questions or changes they see fit for this uh, policy? I, 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 I'm very impressed. I mean, we have, as a board, one of the first ones having uh, board protocols. And so, yeah. and um, we're trying to be proactive and just sharing expectations on how we behave and, and all that sort of stuff. And I think there's a great comfort level, though. Each year we're mm -hmm. going to review that to see if we got it right. This puts a little bit more teeth into if somebody is doesn't see that quite right and and uh, acts um, in violation of this policy. And the problem when somebody does that, and it hurts not only the person because mm -hmm. they they're, they're, they're but the, the ripples fall on the board, it falls on the district, it falls on the schools, it falls on the, the staff and administration. So those are kind of like un, unforced errors we just don't need because there's so many things that we're trying to do in the positive way. So this kind of lays it out and every current member or new member will have this as guidance. And so I think it's absolutely the right way to go. Excellent. So if you have any feedback, uh, Cynthia, typically what uh, will sometimes happen, members will share it with their policy committee rep. Which is and I just Which is Pat. And I just ask if you CC me on it. I try to capture that and then share out our feedback at the next time the policy committee meets. Okay. Excellent. So we'll be looking for possible approval of this on August. Probably. Probably <laughs> September, <laughs> that okay. first Monday in September. Okay. Remember the index well, issue, which is probably Labor Day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll figure, anyway. we'll figure it out. To be okay. Okay, great. Policy doesn't run quick. It takes a couple, <laughs> couple months. Uh, okay, great. So the best part of the meeting, the celebration of learning. Yeah, so Pat mentioned it, but... Uh, Last Wednesday, with preschool through sixth grade from both campuses, we had completed a month-long artistin residency with the White River Valley players, specifically uh, Susan Rule and Dorothy Robson, who came in and worked with every grade level individually and then together and speaking parts. And anybody in grade four through six um, could audition for a speaking part. And if you auditioned, you got a speaking part, which I think was great <laughs> because they all did it. Um, and then, so this kind of captures, and then there was lots of singing and it'll stick in your head for a little bit. I was singing some other night. Um, so this captures the opening number, which I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but this is all of us together on stage, both, um, groups. Hopefully this I had to have someone else film it for me because it was a little busy. But <laughs> people had to go to the bathroom. There are all sorts of emergencies that happen. But, um. Just a snapshot, and then each group the animals had a little number. So it's essentially a talent show for all the different parts of the barn. There were jokes, there were all sorts of things. And today started the beginning of our farm tours that goes with this. So both preschools went to Liberty Hill Farm today and they got the 
live hands-on experience of watching two calves be birthed. Wow! <laughs> um, as well as, uh, right, as, well as to um, feed the goats and do some other things there, some farm chores. And then tomorrow, um, kindergarten through second grade and kindergarten through third grade, depending on um, configurations, we'll go to Liberty Hill Farm in Rochester, um, North Hollow Farm, in Rochester and then Birdsong Hall or not Hollow Birdsong Farm in Stockbridge. So we're really starting to learn yeah. about like what's in our community uh, farming wise as kind of a collaboration of this. And then um, fifth and sixth graders from Rochester and Stockbridge will be getting together the next Wednesday and Thursday. And we're going to it's right behind you. The most costly journey is a graphic novel created by about migrant workers in the state of Vermont. Okay. So we're gonna have a unified book club around that and some teaching, and then they will also get to go do the farm tours too. To the same farms. To the same farms, yeah. yes. That's so. exciting. I um, was present for the show. It was so cute. It was unbelievable that the amount of students that they could get on and off the stage right. in such a orderly fashion, um, it really went off so well. It was uh, the, the littles especially, right? Yes. Because that's always quite the shuffle. We're very impressive. We only did two rehearsals all together. Yeah. Um, oh. And they really, uh, other than being excited to sit in the auditorium chairs, which comes with a lot of flipping yourself like a sandwich in the middle <laughs> right. of the chair, uh, they did a great job. And they were so excited to be there and like didn't interrupt rehearsal because they loved to hear what the older kids were saying. Watching the so performance in it front was of them. great, you know. I look at it, it's a unfortunate we didn't have a music teacher this year, but this was amazing and not something I'm sure we would have come up with had we right. had a music teacher. So well, and I really love that it's um it's more than just the performance, it's now part of the education of farming, of animals, of what's in our valley, right. of opportunities that are out there that maybe you're not exposed to um and it, it uh, i think it was really exciting so mm -hmm. i really like um the book about migrant farm laborers i mean uh, american history it's 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 not a positive story to be told and um so normally the Chicanos, um, the green carters coming in from Mexico and mistreated and uh, the, uh, the chemicals they put in the farms uh, on the, the ground and they're uh, barely paid and it's stoop labor and uh, California is just, um, there's some great, not great stories, just harrowing stories and we forget that it c could be right here mm -hmm. um, and it's not all negative but to be able to tell stories that have a message and we learn from how we need to be a little bit more compassionate and caring is, is really important. So to be able to do that at a younger age, um, I think is, is terrific. Excellent. Well, thank you. You're is there welcome. any other uh, comments or questions on the celebration of learning? All right, we will move on to the uh, annual retreat date and topics for agenda. Um, has there been a date proposed? I think it might, the date might start with our superintendent and, and the principal of what might work for you, because I think uh, it's important um, to be there. Uh, and then we could yes. possibly work around that. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know whether, and you need some time off. So um, what's what, what? What do you recommend, folks? So I'm I'm gone the week of the fourth of July, mm -hmm. and I'm gone that not the following week, the week after that. Those are my two weeks this year. Of course, they're centered around horse shows. <laughs> um, but those are the two weeks I'm gone. So. I'm not certain, Lindy, what yours off the top of my, it's up in the air a little bit. It's Let's up in the air, yeah. Today. Well, were we looking at July, or I kind of had the impression that July we were just completely taking off. Yeah, so in a... August, we're around. Mm -hmm. And so the whole admin team, the expectation is we do our rest and recovery in July. Yeah. And principals know that in central office in general, we're back 
full go August 1st. And I'd so, like to support that you guys have July. I think so. it's worked fairly well yeah. for folks. Yeah, I think we've done September in the past, right? We it's have done some September, September at times. Yep, we've done, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I would say availability for me from August on mm -hmm. through August and September is I'm, okay. I'm around. And what are we talking about? Weekdays? Are we talking about? I think we did. It We've done Saturday both. Before, We've so. done a weekday um, evening, and then we've done a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think fresher in the mornings, frankly. So. For a retreat, I actually kind of liked doing it earlier. I don't know how other folks felt, but... Right, on a Saturday morning. Um, when, as school is ramping up to start again, or it is the beginning weeks of school, is that a more difficult time to try to do a retreat, Lindy? It's easier for me. <laughs> Superintendents, t it's funny. Like, the first two weeks of school, I can, essentially, it's, nothing's hit my... Uh, yeah, I think the fan hasn't for, started yet. For <laughs> principles, I think. Yeah, they can okay. Be I don't want to speak for you. I just. Um, I'm just thinking I'm just about how say, many new staff I have to. You know, I'm thinking about yeah. August, either the beginning of. I mean, if if that around school times starting is, um, you know, I don't want to put more pressure on. This is not about more pressure. No, no. So no. like, maybe we should think of the beginning of September, uh, beginning of August, or more towards yeah. the end of September. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, those two would be more appropriate. I mean, I'm looking for whatever makes the most sense from you, though. Uh, the, you know, even. Se September's not, the beginning, <laughs> I hate to say this, I'm going to jinx myself, right? Beginning of September has typically worked out okay for me as well. Um, the 9th is a Saturday. Yeah. The 9th yeah, is September. September, and yep. then it's not on a holiday weekend. Well, if that... I would be okay with the beginning of September, September 9th, if that is it's good yeah. for Lindy. Again, I don't want to put put no. out pressure. I, Once I want you to open school kind of, and feel good about no, it. No, we're kind of in know. a rhythm in our house anyways at that point, so that's, yeah. Okay, well, does um does a Saturday, September 9th, um, at this point look good to people that maybe we can tentatively get that scheduled in? and. I thought, it, I thought it worked out well last time. We could do a bunch of work, have lunch together. Right. Yeah. We did like nine to. We're, we're talking about nine thirty or something to twelve. Nine. Or something? Yeah. I was yeah. Nine. yeah. Huh? I think we did nine, like nine, nine to nine. eleven ish, and then we went and got lunch, and then had lunch together, and then we were done. Right. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, how does that sound to you? September 9th for a retreat, uh, about nine in the morning till. Probably twelve. Twelve. Twelve thirty. Time lunch is yeah. over. Sounds, sounds good to me. Okay. Could I suggest it be in Stockbridge this year? Sure. We've got a lovely location. Um, yeah, we can alternate like we do it. You're going to open at me. So oh, yeah. Right. New meeting. I'll be back if you uh, Okay. Great. So why don't we uh, let's get that on the calendar. And okay. If something does start to <coughs> crop up, um, please just, no. you know, uh, make us aware and we can we can move accordingly. Okay. Super. Uh, then we're going to move on to the uh, tax anticipation note, Tara. Just, just before we Oh, move. sorry. Sorry, just one, one second here. Um, uh, oh, we're still supposed to look at the topics on the agenda. I was oh, thinking, sorry. I was thinking <laughs> we've got a long ways away, and my suggestion is that we just send our email, Amy, our suggestions of what should be, what we should talk about in the retreat. Yeah. And coordinate it through you, if that's okay. I think that sounds and great. And then a yeah. week or so before, you can <coughs> let us know, uh, yeah. here's here's what we're going to talk about or thinking about talking about. Great. And because um, we, we, we could brainstorm tonight, but we can brainstorm separately and then you can. I think that's appropriate. Is that okay with yeah. you? Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. okay. I've always enjoyed the retreats. It's a good time to. Oh, let her yeah. hair down and really kind of, the, <laughs> you know, discussion. Re yeah, really have some more in-depth discussions and, and stuff. So, okay. okay, I think that sounds great. So send topics for agenda to we'll forward to you to myself, and we'll um, I'll work with Jamie to uh, to create that. Okay, so yes, now Tara, we'll move on. Sorry, to the Tara. That's fine. The tax anticipation now. No worries, Ray. Can you put my memo up on the screen, please?
So as you know, the tax anticipation note we get each year and we use the tax anticipation note to cover payroll and accounts payable expenses while we're waiting for property tax and education fund payments to come in. Community National Bank is our lender for this. The borrowing interest rate is 3.97% and the investment rate is 4.32%. And this fiscal year for 24, the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District's tax anticipation note is in the amount of $1,022,149. Okay. I, go ahead, sorry. Um, no, I'm sorry. If you have more to say, go ahead. I, I can ask my question when you're done. I was just gonna say the paragraph right above is the wording for the motion that I will need you all to make. Okay. Excellent. So the, um, the, well, I'm looking at the TAM borrowing and that would be the rate that when we borrowed the money, that's the interest that we are paying on the money. That's correct. Yep. And yep. then the earning is the money that while well, if we're not borrowing it, that money is earning that. Perfect. So Perfect. every year on July 1st, the money is withdrawn from the tax anticipation note and put into our arbitrage account with Community National Bank. And then that is where your treasurer will draw down from as she needs it. So any money that she doesn't utilize in that arbitrage account, that's where we're earning that 4.32% interest. And then at the end of the fifth year or when we make payments back, we pay back with a 3.97% interest rate. I think that looks great. We earn more if it's there than we, than we have to pay when we borrow it. And that's just yep. the rate of borrowing at this point. So um, I would like to make a motion. I would ask the board motion and approve the signing of the non arbitrary arbitrary arbitrage. 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 Arbitrage of the non arbitrage and use of Sorry. proceeds <laughs> certificate, arbitrage certificate, resolution, and note so we may execute the appropriate documents and instruct the school treasurer of each district to sign the following representative amounts Rochester Stockbridge being $1,022,149. I, I second so, that. <laughs> okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? All right. With no further discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Patrick? It's okay. We have a quorum yeah. of, of four. So I will, whatever easiest for you all, I will need a majority of the board on a couple of the documents and then clerk of the board being Patrick will sign on one specific document and then the school district treasurer also signs. So I can bring all of the forms to Kristen's office in Rochester. If that's easier for all of you than coming to me first. So I just need to know how you would like me to handle the loan documents and the signing of them. Amy, we can put yours, we can bring yours to you at Bethel Mills. I was just, I was just gonna say, I could probably stop by or you can bring, bring it in my yeah. end. Okay. Um, yeah, then I think, um, would would that be, um, is it easiest for um, you to make it to the town clerk's office to, to sign on this? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay, and then um, what about, what about Stockbridge? Would it move to Stockbridge then for for Bill to oh, we, we can, and Justine? You just improve the road. It's, it's yeah, okay, okay, okay. Great. Yes, um, that would be great if we can bring it. Um, I can sign it in Bethel, and um, it can be brought to Kristen in Rochester uh, for the rest of the signatures. And so, when that happens, will an email go out to the board members to let them know that the documents are available for them to sign? Yes. My goal will be, Amy, if I can't get to you tomorrow, are you in on Thursday yep, morning? Yep. Okay, because I have a meeting in Bethel Thursday morning. I can stop by and have you sign when that's done and then shoot the documents right over to Rochester and then I can shoot an email out to the remaining board members to let them know. Perfect. Right now. Okay. 
Okay, sounds wonderful. Excellent. Thank you all. All right, thank you, Tara. So what day should I sign it by? Um, she's going to send an email, hopefully on Thursday, that the okay. documents will be available to sign. Okay. And if we could try to get there probably before the weekend would be great, Thursday or Friday. Okay. If that works for everybody, the faster we can get this turned around, so yeah. Yeah. It puts it to bed and, and, and the better. Sign before the weekend. Okay. Um, barring we have, she you get an email from her. <laughs> um, okay. Um, great, so then we'll move on to principal request for Rochester trustee funds, which yeah. I believe is principal request for Rochester endowment funds. Right, sorry. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, okay. it, I know because there's language, uh, it's just different language. I'm still learning what the language okay. is. So I wrote up a little something because I just wasn't sure. Uh, do you mean I were talking about it? Um, so what I was basing this off, and Amy, tell me if I'm even in the right spot, is that funds for excellent, like when you shared out yep. those funds and the list. Yep. Okay, so I was basing this ask, so I just mentioned all these agricultural field trips were going on. What I didn't anticipate when I budgeted last year was how much more transportation would be for field trips. Not okay. that we can't make it work, but what I was hoping to do was use some funds from what I get from the Stockbridge trustees as well as potentially the uh, Rochester endowment funds to kind of offset some of those transportation costs okay. for um, these field trips. Specifically for these field yeah. trips for the, for the kids right. to, to go to the school. Okay, so uh, the plan is a, right, is a combination of, of the Stockbridge funds right. and the Rochester funds right. to be able to. Um, so I, uh, the fund for excellence is indeed a... Um, and the a, right... Ballpark. It, well, yeah. Trying the, to figure out too. The fund for excellence and the is yeah. Let me, yeah. Yeah. It, it is. Um, okay. It, it definitely is. I was just looking for that little thing that I wrote up. Yeah. Um, yes. It's uh, it's directly benefits students for opportunities for learning and recreation. So it has both, it could be one or, or, or the other components, mm -hmm. and it is administered by the principal okay. of the principal's request. So um, I think you are looking for an amount of uh, $1,850. $1, Excellent. Um, and I didn't bring our, our, our book, but we definitely have um, enough funds in that to um, okay. to contribute to this. And I, I think this is a worthy, um, experience for the kids okay um and i definitely like to to get them out and about and then this is a good right. opportunity for education for them so um i think it would be a great idea i can't remember because you did all the homework yeah. about all the rochester trustee funds and yes. some were mm -hmm. con controlled or, or overseen by the trustees of public funds in rochester and some by the school board is is this ours this we, is ours so, so we decide this is ours we decide and actually this was money that was um essentially given to the principal to administer yep. right. so um we are just a uh, kind of a guiding force with with it yep. but it is uh, to her discretion of what she'd like to spend the and money I on like that. um yeah i think that's a re that's really great and yes um there's three funds well there's there is funds and this is one of them that is under our okay. umbrella okay. here Okay. And this is the right process? To, uh, uh, this is the first question. time we have done it. Okay. That's why I'm asking a lot and of questions because it's a little yes, different. Yes, exactly. Um, and I think, you know, this is definitely a way that Tara was, Tara was interested in okay. us doing is that you bring a specific um, request to the board. Um, I do, I, w I would like to, us to possibly set up m uh, a more um, discussion on an annual basis that says, we 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 can allocate five thousand dollars out of X fund. Let's see what if Lindy has anything. You know, the, so we kind of know ahead of time of the amounts that we're that. willing yeah. to spend. Absolutely. But I think that as a starting place, okay. this is a good a good place to start. Yeah, I like what your sentiment is that we do the fis fiscal planning. Yes. We have fiduciary responsibilities that this money doesn't go down to zero. But the idea is that primarily it's our our principal is going to decide and advise us where it's well spent, and we're going to delegate that. Uh, we're not going to micromanage it. So what I hear you saying is we're going to kind of have a target amount 
And, That's what I would yeah. like to see. And then, and, and then she comes back to us and says, here's, yeah, I think yeah, everyone right. makes okay. the same. Okay. Great. So we'll we'll work on our side to, to figure, con figure yeah, out this process fine. a little bit better. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, I, I would uh, I would like to make a motion to um, approve this request of one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars to be taken from the Rochester uh, uh, Fund for Excellence. Um, I second. Great. Uh, motion's been made and second. Is there any uh, further discussion? All right. I think it's a wonderful thing to do, though. Uh, to, uh, farms are Vermont heritage. Yeah. The kids should know about farming and Excellent. where they came from, their families come from. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well put. Very good. good. Very nice. Yes. Okay. Well, then, um, if there's no further uh, comments, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Great. So moved, so passed. Okay. okay. Well, then that moves us on to new hires and resignations, doesn't it? So we're in the process of hiring. There's some offers out oh, there. Um, so I should have a full update soon. Okay. There's some names, and they'll go meet with Jamie. So. Any reservations? Um, not like, so not resignations in terms of like not finishing the school year out but um a couple folks that are not coming back next year because they're moving on to different positions all for um personal reasons um from here maureen Rowe is uh leaving to move closer to her partner and his family um so that's our four five six math and science teacher mm. um and our preschool teacher, Sarah Newton, is moving to just, she moved physically, like she and her husband moved during the school year, and she's commuting over an hour. Oof. So she found something a little closer to home. Um, so, and then in uh, Rochester, um, we're working to replace the teacher that I never replaced. And we've had some success with that, but I don't, that person still has to meet with Jamie, so I can't. <laughs> say it officially um and then uh lauren hartunian's guest gal i'm not sure which she go, it depends which email um okay. but lauren is not returning because she had twins and um burley uh who has been her paraeducator and assistant will be taking over that program oh, because he completed yeah. his yeah. He's certification so that Good was very him. smooth awesome. um yeah. Yeah. hope sornberger will not uh be returning she's chosen to go teach high school oh um and there's an offer out there for someone and again that's not finalized yet so i'll save names i feel okay. like I'm keeping top secret information here <laughs> uh, and then but i also don't want to drink it till contracts are signed and then uh sean lenahan will not be returning oh. next year Oh. Which is the best. So. Okay, so we definitely have some positions right. to be Right, and so there's for. stuff we're in a good spot. It's a, I would say the process is kind of a trickle. In past years, you used to be like, on this night, we're going to interview for this many hours, and we'd have this many applicants. And now it's kind of like, here comes an applicant. Okay, let's interview. Let's check references. Yeah. Let's see. That's just kind of the shift in hiring, I would say, that's taken place at this point in time. What, Lenny, what's the, um, how's the Vermont or I guess the uh, Northeast uh, market for, for school teachers and elementary school teachers in particular? Is there a, a, just a dearth and, or is it picking up again? Is it, um, how are we doing in the market? I guess my question is this a, a, a mission impossible or is we've got some real assets that can attract talented people to join us? Um, we seem to be attracting high quality candidates. Like I mentioned, it's it's about how quickly you can move through the process right now. You know. Like checking references before you even interview someone. So if that person is a good fit, then you can turn around and offer wow. quickly. Yeah, just cause it's, there's, it's a job seekers market right now. So, yeah. um, but we seem to be attracting high quality folks. So. Excellent. Right, headed in the right direction. Is there a music teacher? 
Uh, there is not, there was an, I have an interview tomorrow. So, <laughs> cross <luck>. whichever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That seems to be a harder yeah. position yeah. to fill um, across the state. I don't yes. think it's any. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm very happy we were able to look outside of the box for some other opportunities to do um, music yeah. and theater um, to tap into the resources that we have in our community. Yeah, and I, it's been I, fun. I know that you have done that with other artists and residents type stuff, and I just think that's it's a great experience for kids yeah. to have as well because yeah. it's, it's a completely different It is very different than music class. Exactly. Yeah, you know. and, and maybe even more memorable, memorable to them right. um, yeah. as an experience. So. There's lots of, I don't think you could tell, but they all had bandanas on and their shirts. I think some folks haven't oh, taken them off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Like that. And I like to uh, do a horn for Summer Music for Kids, which is mm. a homegrown yeah. nonprofit. Uh, that's, um, this, we got tied to my teachers and this is going to we started last summer, six Wednesdays, and then it was so good that we went through the school year on the Friday mm. half days, and uh, we're going to do it again for seven weeks rather than six, one half day nice. a week, and then hopefully go back and team up again with yeah. Wendy and her team, because um, there's a lot of talent out there, and just music just is so important. Yeah, I agree. That's Absolutely. great. Okay, um, is there any public comment? I don't think there's any public I don't think there is any public on. Okay, um, great. So our next meeting date, so we take July off. Woo, dear. So that is going to be um, August 7th, Monday, August 7th. Yeah, I had one thing that I want to discuss, which um. I see. The seventh, seventh of August. Okay. Um, five thirty, and they'll be in Rochester. Okay, and do we have any um, future agenda items we'd like to bring up at this time? Well, I was hoping that we we're going to talk about Chapter Seven of the Governance Core. Mm, yeah, no, and I was looking around, and so I'm trying to be very diplomatic here because uh, Lindy's heard all the excuses about well, my dog ate my homework <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And I'm looking around here, and the only one I think is prepared is Patrick and myself. And so I don't want to embarrass everything, but it's a really Chapter Seven is talking about really the, the what we're all about. And, yeah, I'm a, I'm a chapter behind. I was reading so, six. So, <laughs> um, I just want to get guys in the chair. I think yeah. it's late now, and but if if we, if I think it would be nice to do it in August. It's Absolutely. not too late. And then on the retreat, I think we should. One of the topics should be how are these monthly readings kind of chapters working, and we want to continue that process with another book or something like that. But that we can point that on. But it's. It's well worth it. It's only like 15 pages, but it really zeroes in on the, the key things school boards are supposed to be all about. And I never fail to look at that and go, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, no, I in my suggestion, I, I, Madam uh, I think uh, if chair. it brings us any enlightenment at all, it's worth yeah. uh, reading. Um, so we are on Chapter 7 for um, the August seventh meeting so that'll be go. good to remember um so i, I definitely agree i'll move this for, to august um yes actually i was at a the board chair um conference that, oh. that, that you had that you have to go to and i pulled out my book and i got so many comments oh you're reading that and i said yes my my whole board is reading it as a book club and they yeah. thought it was the they, they said, oh, that's such a great book. Isn't that so wonderful? So um, it definitely is highly oh, esteemed good. in the, uh, <laughs> for sure. So, okay. Um, so if there's no other future agenda items to add at this time, if there are any more, um, email me and uh, Jamie and we'll uh, add them on and email me about um, topics for the retreat. All uh, right. Well, if there's no further discussion items, I'll, make, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everyone.